guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join me today because we have a really great Silhouette Studio tutorial for you. Now, if you enjoy working with Silhouette Studio or want to learn more about the software, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because we have a lot of really great videos for you now and coming for you in the future. But for today, we are setting up our very own sublimation design. So let's get started. All right, guys, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. Um, if you've watched any of our sublimation videos before, you know that I love setting up my designs in Silhouette Studio. And here I am ready to show you a little bit more in depth. We'll consider this more of an intermediate sublimation tutorial because we're going to combine multiple elements to create your own design. Now, what we're working with today is a pillow cover, but it has a pocket in there because it's really great for holding books. Um, sometimes people often also put them in the living room to hold remotes and things like that. So really useful, but I'm going to make a pillowcase cover and I'm going to show you about combining different elements to set up my very own design. Now to start with, I know that my pillowcase cover, my pillow cover is a square and it is roughly 15 and a half by 15 and a half. So I'm gonna draw a square. I'm gonna come up here, I can lock my aspect ratio, and then I can just type in 15.5, okay? And this is going to give me the template that I'm working with. But then, like I said, the bottom half is a pocket, so we need to go ahead and account for that when we're setting up our designs. So I know that my pocket accounts for roughly eight inches. So I'm gonna create a duplicate. Now I used control and the right button on my directional arrows on my keyboard. And then I'm going to unlock my aspect ratio and I'm gonna change this height to eight inches, okay? Because that is roughly what we're looking at for setting up our design. Now I'm just gonna line them up centered and at the bottom. So this is a template of what our pillow cover looks like. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna move this off to the side and I'm going to open a file explorer window and we're going to drag and drop several of the elements that we're gonna mess with today, okay? Now first and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop our SVG file. All right, this is gonna be our cute little quote. I really like it a lot. Let's go ahead and open up, let's see our tie dye colors. And I can select any of these because they're actually part of a set. So let's do this tie dye one here and we're just gonna drag and drop that over here as well. Now one that we're gonna drag and drop a lot. Do you see all these butterflies? These are coordinating to the patterns that we just used, okay? So I can, I'm gonna drag and drop quite a few of these butterflies over here. Now, when I drag and drop them, I don't want them to overlap because they will absolutely, um, you know, cover each other up. So I wanna make sure that I'm placing them in places that do not have butterflies already or our SVG or the, the background that we're using. Now, some of these look similar, but that's okay because we are going to space them out. All right, so let's start with those. We can always bring in more if we need to, okay? And then the last thing that we're gonna take a look at, let me go back to that file explorer window. We are going to use one of these bleach effects. Now I know that it's kind of hard to see because we're looking at white on white, but basically I just wanna pick one out that is a little oval in shape. So I'm just gonna hover over, see if I can find one. So I think we're gonna use this one and then we can just modify it a little bit. Now this will probably take a minute to import because it is a much more detailed PNG than the others that we're working with. So just give it a moment, try not to rush it along, but just drag and drop it like we did the butterflies and that background. All right, so once it goes through, let's get rid of our little file explorer window here. So we have a lot going on here, so don't be alarmed if it slows down your software, okay? But we're gonna power through and we're going to um, get this arranged. Now remember that when you're working with anything that's heavy with graphics, that you know this is where the resources on your computer really get taxed the most. So if you experience a lot of slowdown, then you may want to go ahead and make sure that you have all of your other applications um, closed down, okay? So make sure that you have as much available resources as possible, like I said, if you're experiencing that 
slow down. Now let's go ahead and start taking things down to size. So of course I can use my handles here on the image or I can use the sizing tools up here at the top on my toolbar. So we wanna go ahead and we're gonna lock that aspect ratio. And instead I'm going to change the height to let's say 10 inches for now. So let's go ahead and size it down. All right, so next we will just go ahead and my favorite, we're gonna change the line color to transparent. So we're gonna move this beauty over out of the way for now. And let's start talking about these other goodies that we have over here. So let's go ahead and move some of our butterflies. Obviously we don't need them quite this large, so we are going to size them down. But if we can get them all in the same general area, then that will be a lot easier. So I'm gonna stack them up, select them all with my drag box, and just size them down using the handle. Pretty easy. And then we're gonna repeat the process. We're going to change our line to transparent. Our SVG file is all grouped together, so that's good also. So we will make it smaller. We can go ahead and put that here. And then of course we have our lovely background. Okay, so let's take our template and I'm gonna use the center to page. I know that our page isn't quite big enough, but that's what our template is for, okay? So bring our elements a little closer and then we can zoom back in now that everything's not so large and in charge. Now, let's go ahead and I want to design this saying to be down here on the bottom portion of my pillow. So we'll make it a little larger. It ends up being just a little over 10 inches and we can center that. All right, now, Let's go ahead and talk about what we want to do with this background. So I thought we would pepper our um, butterflies here over the back and then use this really awesome background to go here on our bottom area, okay? So like I said, this is 15 and a half inches wide. So if I click on my background and I'm going to change it here We'll do a little over 15 and a half. We'll do 15.6, but we can select both of these, center them to each other, and then let's use the crop. Okay, now we'll send to back. I know we did a lot of things there, so don't be afraid to rewind and pause for step-by-step, step, but we just basically used our crop feature, and then now we are recentering it. Okay, but of course our um, design is a little bit harder to read. So let's go ahead and use our bleach effect. So we're gonna rotate it here. We're gonna bring that over on top of our design here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit wider so it's more ovally, if that's a word. Alrighty, so once we've stretched it out a bit, we're going to use our, we'll call them like arrange functions, because I want to be able to bring my SVG in front of my little bleach circle. So I'm gonna use the send backwards. Better yet, let's click on our SVG and we can bring it forward. Bring to front, there we go. All right, so let's get it all arranged in there nice and tidy. As a matter of fact, we can just grab all three of these, the background, the SVG, and the um, bleach circle using our drag box and go ahead and just center them all to each other. All right, there we go. Now I'm only bringing this up back even with our square for the um, actual pillow cover because I still want to be able to arrange these cute little butterflies, okay? So of course I can put these wherever I want, but I just need to remember that anything below this circle isn't going to be visible, okay? So I'll go a little bit lower just so that I don't have like a weird white gap, but you know, it's just something that I need to keep in mind. So I'm gonna spread these back out just to see what I have here. I wanna keep my more solid colors, I think down here towards the bottom. Not that I can't mix it up, but um, you know, I, otherwise my tie dye will just mix right in. So 
Um, I am going to make these a little bit smaller as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Use my drag box again. And then I just want to arrange them and I can use my little free rotate to go ahead and have them facing different ways. So hold tight while I arrange these and then we'll take a look at the finished design. All right, so once you get all of your little butterflies arranged, and of course I just did mine at random, rotated them here and there. I played a little bit with the um, arrangement of, you know, the order on how all of these um, fit together. But overall, I'm just really happy with how they turned out. And um, now the very last thing we're gonna do is we're going to ungroup our SVG file. And basically I want to modify the colors. Okay, so I'm going to open my fill panel and I'm going to use my little color eyedropper. Um, so I want to select the darkest shade of pink that we have here. Well, let's undo that because I don't want to change these butterflies too. So let's ungroup again. Same thing down here. We will ungroup again. And I'm going to select the butterfly. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select these two butterflies also. Now, I like this pink, but I do wish that it was darker. So let's select that, and then let's go to advanced, because it should give us our approx approximate color shade here. Let's see if we can make it a little darker. So I'm just gonna slide this up. There we go, so it's still like in the same color wheelhouse, but it'll just have a little bit more color definition. So then we'll do the same with the blue. I'm gonna click on my text, and then these two butterflies up here. Group those together. And then I'm actually going to do the purple. No, I do like the blue. I changed my mind, I do like the blue. So let's select the darkest blue and just go ahead and slide that up into the more vibrant colors. Okay, so what do we think? Maybe we'll go a little bit lighter on the pink. It does seem a little dark. There we go, so what do you guys think about that? I know it may not be all inspiring, but I really do like it. Let's go ahead and I want to group these butterflies together so that they all stay in the right place. I don't accidentally change anything. Okay, so now literally that's it for designing. I will group this together as well. And we are free to print these on our printer. Now, if you have a large format printer, then you can print um, all of this together and press it at one time. But personally, what I like to do is print the bottom pocket and then print the butterflies. And then that way we can press them at two separate times because you are gonna have a seam here Okay, so you don't want that to interfere with the type of design that you're setting up here, all right? I don't want to actually get my alignment wrong. I don't want to do anything like that. So, uh, but don't worry. We do have a follow-up video because this one obviously was showing you different elements to setting up your own sublimation design. We used an SVG file. We used um, clip art. We used a pattern background. And we used that really cool bleach effect that helps us to add definition behind our SVG file. That way it doesn't get lost in that pattern background. There's a lot of different reasons why you can use those bleach effects. Um, but, you know, this was pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, and now all I left to do is to print and press. But remember, like I said, you could easily customize this with a monogram or an initial, or if you have another SVG file that you would like. Um, but I am going to print this out for you on our next video and show you just how to line this up on your pillow and press it for yourself. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So guys, how did you feel about creating our own sublimation design? Now I know we use a lot of really awesome elements and I know it can feel a little bit intimidating, but especially in a software as amazing as Silhouette Studio, it is super duper easy. You just bring in those elements, combine them together. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of vision, 
but really getting in there, playing around. You can swap out elements if they're not doing it for you. There's just a lot that you can do in the software to set up these designs that are great for custom gifts and home decor, really anything you can think of. If you're in the business for selling, then of course, custom and creative gifts are a really great uh, item just to have on hand to be able to advertise. You know, this one wasn't even personalized, but it would also be super easy to add, you know, a quick initial monogram name, whatever floats your boat. So if you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. I do love to hear from you guys. I love helping you any way I can. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, maybe share with a crafty friend, because helping us to grow the channel helps us to also bring you these really awesome videos in the future. So I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys, but I really do appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate all your support and we'll see you again next time.